my name is Mick Bell, a long-term Morpeth resident. I'm the second of three generations to go to this school. I was here 1955 to 1962. My mother attended here as a child and then in 1995 my daughter came here. So there's been three generations at Goose Hill. Well that, that's a remarkable uh, um, lineage. What do you remember most of all about yeah, your years here? Happy. It was great. Um, the teachers were inspirational. Our names that spring to mind, Miss Thompson, um, Mr Oliver who took the senior class. He was an ex-REF pilot during the war um, and Mrs Stevenson, June Stevenson, who was a lovely, lovely woman who I knew long into her retirement because she ended up living across the road from my mum on the High Stanners. So um, it's things like school milk, warm school milk when it was next to the radiators, um, school dinners were good. What, uh, what sort of things did you have? Basic, basic English dodge, if I remember rightly. It was meat and two veg, um, rice pudding, steam puddings and custards. There's nothing fancy, nothing, nothing continental or innovative then. It was just good old. Because of course, a lot of food was still just coming off the ration in in the, in the mid 50s. It, the ration was still going on till 54. So school dinners weren't nearly as bad as some people no, make them out to be. I remember them as well. I vaguely remember, but I think they were good. Um, as far as the other teachers, Mr. Jackson, who was the headmaster, was a terror. Everybody was terrified of Mr. Jackson, and he had a leather strap, which he used to wear. I avoided it, thankfully, but I knew several of my friends that got it. And um, so, what was discipline like at uh, school? Was it very strict? Um, well, I suppose by today's standards it might be called strict, but society was was different then. You you were brought up, you did as you were told by those in authority. Of course, I mean, you did school and then you ended up at 18, you had national service, so it was a very disciplined society and you just did as you were told, basically. There was no question of authority. I tried that later on when I moved schools, but that didn't really get me anywhere at King Edward's Grammar School, I remember rightly. But um, I just remember it was a happy time for myself and years later Lucy loved it here. It, it's, it's always had a great atmosphere. And what do you think about uh, the school moving after uh, 108 years? <sighs> Not before time. I mean, you think now where the school is, you, you read all about air pollution. And you think of all the years of having a playground right next to a busy road, the air pollution must be horrendous and the thought of moving to a new school with open air playing fields, I mean all our playing fields were on the, the schoolyard, everything, cricket, football, on the schoolyard. I mean the other thing I must remember was the, the outdoor toilets for the boys, which are still standing at the end of the schoolyard and they were freezing in the wind, absolutely freezing. But um, yeah, great, happy time, loved it. I believe that uh, you were involved in making a, a presentation. Yes, and I've put the photographs and the letter out there. It was, Jan it was the end of the Christmas term 1957. Miss Peacock, the headmistress, who was another lovely gentlewoman, she retired and myself and a fellow pupil called Anne Pyle were chosen to present her with our leaving gifts and we gave her a clock and a kettle and in January 58 she sent me a letter containing photographs, two photographs of the presentation and a lovely letter thanking me for taking part. Another, another lovely inspirational one. And I would imagine that uh, in your school time here you made a lot of friends. Yes, I mean I still see people that I went to school with and in fact when Lucy was here one of my classmates was working here um, Liz Law, or Elizabeth Renton as she was then um, I still see fellow pupils, Terry Smythe, I still see around the, around the town now and then um, and it's more with that sort of place that you, you meet them, you meet kids at school and you're seeing them 50 plus years later 
So how, in, in a nutshell, how important was this uh, school to, to your life? I would say it was inspirational, it was moulding. It, it, I would say it made me, the, made me the man I am today, but I wasn't bold or without the beard then. But I think it was a great grounding in life. The, the general atmosphere and the whole ambience of the school was, was caring, it was loving and it was inspirational. I'm Margaret Strong, niece Spence. I was a pupil here from 1944 to 1950. Tell us a little bit about uh, your most vivid recollections of Goose Hill School. Well, to start with, I wasn't very happy because I'd always been at home with my mother and no other um, small children to play with, so I wasn't a happy bunny. Um, but the teacher, Mrs Simpson, was a lovely teacher and I soon settled down. But the most vivid um, thing I remember was being in the school play and playing the Queen of Hearts. But I think that was when I was in the junior school and we were also uh, had a um, choir and I was in the school choir and we won first prize at the Wandsbeck Music Festival. Were, were your school days happy days? Um, on the whole, yes, I think so. Sounds as like if there's a bit of a qualification there. There must have been some days that weren't so good. <laughs> I was never terribly keen on school, I have to say. If I could sew and cook, which you didn't do here, um, I was fine. But in English, um, I was well up with English. So but were then, there some lessons that you didn't like? Yes, definitely maths wasn't happy with maths at all and uh, the others had just sort of took me stride. And what about what about making friends at school? Did you find that easy? Yes, um, I had quite a few friends. Uh, some lived near me in Morpeth, um, so I tended to play with them. But I did make friends with people that lived um, in other parts of the town. And have any of those friendships endured? Unfortunately, most of the, the people that I knew are no longer with us. Um, I do have one friend who is now in a care home um, and she's not very communicative, I'm afraid. So how do you feel coming back today to your old, your old classrooms? Um, it's interesting to see the changes um, instead of what we had, uh, it's completely different. Uh, little chairs and where we had desks with inkwells and things like that. And what do you, what sort of, what do you think that the school did for you? I think it made me a bit more confident because I was very shy. Um, and certainly when I got to um, middle school, well, uh, I went in for a lot of drama. I like that sort of thing. So I think it gave me a lot of confidence. And what about uh, other teachers that, that stick in your mind from your days here? Well, Miss Foster, Jane Foster, she uh, was the head teacher, very strict. Uh, and as I mentioned before, Miss Mrs. Simpson, she was lovely. Um, I was. Uh, I'm trying to think, Mrs. Miss Pringle, um, she was very nice too. I can't remember many of the others, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but by and large, now when you, you look back with the benefit of hindsight, uh, do you think this, this school was good for you? Oh yes, it certainly brought me out because I was very shy. I would hide behind my mother if anybody spoke to me. Hello, I'm Elaine Ray and I've been head teacher of Morpeth First School, known as Goose Hill locally, for 27 years. Tonight we've had a wonderful evening enjoying the first of our sundown celebrations with over 70 ex-pupils from, from the 30s, 40s and 50s. It's been lovely to see people attending from as far away as Leeds and Surrey and meeting up with each other as well as looking at all the photographs we've had out on display from those decades. And the school, I imagine, is uh, very much looking forward to it, its new life. 
we are looking forward we are continuing on the journey the sunrise will happen in september in our new school on the old fire station in morpeth we've been very lucky to have the funding given by northumberland county council and the children from year three who will be our oldest children have had the privilege of going around this afternoon and their excitement was palpable it was really lovely to see all the extra opportunities that will be given to them in a new build, such as a studio, a mugger for outside play, and lots of practical areas as well. And, and what does it uh, mean to you as uh, the head teacher of this school looking back over uh, such a fantastic history of 108 years? Well, talking to ex-pupils tonight, everybody has enjoyed their time at Goose Hill and been very successful. And I think that's our learning journey it's our ethos and our strap line learning together growing together the school has been lucky to have wonderful children and inspirational staff over the time i've been here and we will be holding a thanksgiving service on monday at st george's for the successful time it had under predecessors and particularly miss white the previous leader of the first school um, we've been very very fortunate to have so much support and i lead a wonderful team and i'm hoping that that will just continue in the new build